Hi everyone. I want to start off by saying what this video is not. This video is not an open forum for people to argue about their religious beliefs or their moral beliefs or to attack anyone for theirs. This is not um, a video as an invitation to attack Catholics. This video is done in love in the hopes that my testimony through these small videos that I'm going to put out will bring people to the real Jesus Christ because that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to save souls and I'm trying to do my part. Um, so this video is a hard one for me. I am still mourning the loss of walking away from the Catholic Church. And unless you were born and raised into Catholicism, um, you won't understand what I'm feeling. I was a teeny tiny baby when I was baptized into the Catholic Church. And I wasn't just an Easter and Christmas Catholic. I was a very devout Catholic. I took it very seriously. I had so much love for the church. There was so much beauty in it. I still see a lot of beauty in it that I will carry on with me for the rest of my life. And there are a lot of good people who are Catholics who truly, truly love Jesus. Um, so let me backtrack um, how I got here. Um, how does a devout Catholic um, who ran VBS for like five, six years um, and even taught catechism end up walking away from the Catholic Church? It was God's word. It was truth. It was his truth that opened up my eyes. And um, there's so much more beauty in God's word and in a true relationship with the real Jesus of the Bible, the real one, the real one of the Holy Bible, not the one um, in the Eucharist, not the one in the catechism, not the one in sacraments, but the real Jesus. And what I'm saying right now may sound blasphemous to a lot of Catholics um, because the Holy Eucharist, um, for those who are not Catholic, the Eucharist is... Um, what you guys would call the wafer that is received during communion. For Catholics, um, the belief is that the Holy Eucharist is Jesus's body, blood, soul, and divinity. It is not a symbol. It is him in his full form. And so, um, you know how water turns into ice or can turn into steam it changes physically, but the properties is still H2O. Well, with the Eucharist, the belief is that the opposite happens. That the, the actual, what we're seeing, the physical properties, bread and wine, still look like bread and wine. But the um, properties of what makes it up, like H2O, um, is no longer bread or wine. It turns into the actual but blood, body, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. Um, that's just background for those who don't understand what I'm saying. Um, what kept me Catholic for a very long time was my belief in the Holy Eucharist. My belief that, that I was truly receiving Jesus Christ every Sunday. And that transubstantiation, when the priest consecrated the bread, when he said the words that it truly took on the form of Jesus Christ. Um, there were many times I wanted to walk away, um, but I didn't because of the Eucharist. And, um, and I always felt, well, I'm an activist. I fight for my nation. I would never just walk away from my nation. I am going to stay and fight for the true church. And it was when COVID happened and the world went quiet and everything was stripped away. And I became, uh, I began fasting and praying and immersing myself in the Holy Bible that the truth started to come to light. Um, I already had a foundation in the Bible. I know Catholics um, get a lot of slack for not knowing the Bible, but I find that not to be true. Um, in the Arlington Diocese in Virginia, 
Um, there's a lot of Bible studies and there's a lot of people, a lot of Catholics who, who are truly immersed in the word. Um, and so I had a foundation. So what I did was I began with the book of Revelation. And um, I spent about six months in the book of Revelation and I continued to go back. Um, it is an amazing book. It is life changing. I recommend everyone to do a study on the book of Revelation, get deep in it and keep going back. Just when you think you know it, you find something else when you go back to it. God is amazing in that way. And so once I finished Revelation, I went back to the beginning. I went to Genesis and I've been chomping away. And um, what I realized was that there was a lot that I missed, um, whether um, through a study or just, you know, myself. Um, for example, I never realized that Jesus was the burning bush that Moses spoke to. I had to go into the Old Testament and the New Testament together to realize that that was Jesus and just little things like that. And so, um, but those little things are important because it's what truly builds a, a real foundation in knowing who the real God is. If you miss a lot of these nuances, you miss who he is. And so it was in reading his holy word that the truth started being revealed to me. And growth is hard and it is painful. Um, and I'm, I'm still, I can get really emotional because I'm legit mourning. I'm mourning um, the church that I loved and I'm a little bit angry. Um, I've always been vocal. People who have followed me and know me um, know that I never liked Francis. You know, I've always been a vocal anti-Francis. Um, and once I saw the truth about him and, um, I've always been vocal about the bad things that have gone on inside the church. Um, Pope Innocence, you know, I've spoken out about all that craziness um, and I've spoken out about the pedophilia and things. There are a lot of good Catholics who don't support the corruption that's going on within the church and speak out against it. Um, Michael um, Voris is one of them. Anyway, I was a very um, strong voice for the injustices going on within the church. Um, and I thought that I knew truth, but it wasn't until I got immersed in the Holy Bible one-on-one -on -one through fasting that I realized, whoa, it wasn't just um, the bad people and the evil within the church that's the corruption, but the entire system is a lie. And um, that's why I'm putting out these videos in, a, in, in the hopes that my brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church will come to know the real Jesus Christ. Um, so in reading the you know, Holy Scripture, it says over and over again um, how God's word is the authority. It is the final authority to everything. And, um, and so um, this is what I decided to do. One day, um, I decided to go downstairs and get the catechism because I was reading this book, um, not the Holy Bible. I was reading another book that mentioned something that I was like, wait a minute, the catechism can't possibly say that. And so I picked up this catechism that I've had in my library for over 20 years. And I went to fact check. And lo and behold, the author of that book was correct. And I was floored. So with that in mind, because I am a lover of truth and facts, I did something radical. I read, not radical for me because I read a lot, <laughs> radical for today's world. I read this. I've been chomping away from the very beginning and um, my bookmark. I'm almost at the end. And I was angry at myself for not having read this from beginning to end in the fashion that I'm doing. Um, you know, I have picked up the catechism here and there to like answer a question that I've had for myself. But in reading it from the beginning to where I'm at, um, it's like reading a vaccine insert. It's, it's, it's the excipient list. It has everything that I needed um, straight from 
Catholic doctrine. And I feel silly and angry at myself for never having done this. So I want to share with you the first thing that really like, it was like a punch to the gut to me. Um, after being immersed in the Holy Bible and knowing what God said, uh, when I started reading this, it was a clear contradiction. So this is on page 34 of this edition of the Catechism, and it's number 95. It says, It is clear, therefore, that in the supremely wise arrangement of God, sacred tradition, sacred scripture, and the magisterium of the church magisterium of the church is the church's ability to interpret scripture um, of the church are so connected and so associated that one of them cannot stand without the others this is saying that the holy bible cannot stand on its own that the holy bible cannot stand without the catholic church church's tradition and the catholics the catholic church's interpretation of the bible so I'm going to reread that. It is clear, therefore, that in the supremely wise arrangement of God, sacred tradition, sacred scripture, and the magisterium of the church are so connected and associated that one of them cannot stand without the others. Working together, each in its own way, under the action of the Holy Spirit, they all contribute effectively to the salvation of souls. That is blasphemous. When you read the Bible, you realize how blasphemous that is. And when I read that, it was sincerely a punch in the gut. Um, and it goes on. Sacred tradition and sacred scripture, this is 97 on page 35, make up a single sacred deposit of the word of God, in which, as in Mira, the pilgrim church contemplates God, the source of all her riches. And so I don't want to make this too long, but I am going to be putting out videos and I'm going to show you what the catechism says and then what the Bible says. And I'm going to concentrate on the Holy Eucharist. And I don't want to go into that right now, but I will put this out there. Um, I held on um, to the Catholic Church because of the Holy Eucharist. Um, and my love for Jesus and truly thinking that it was his body, soul, and divinity that I was receiving. And when I read Jesus' words, which I have read before and I have seen on, you know, Hollywood interpretations of what happened, at, you know, at the foot of the cross, um, but when I really read it this time, maybe because I was fasting or maybe because of the walk that God was bringing me to, it hit me like a ton of bricks when I read that he said, it is finished. And then I realized he's done it. It is finished. He did the one sacrifice for all of us, for the forgiveness of our, for the forgiveness of our sins. So there is no way that the transubstantiation, when the priest speaks the words that are supposed to consecrate and turn the bread and wine into the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, there's no way that that is happening. There is no way that Jesus is being sacrificed daily on an altar over and over and over again throughout the world. He said, it is finished, it is done. That really hit me and I had to go back and search scripture and it just, when I got to Hebrews 9 and 10, the wall of deception came down and um, man, I cried so much. So I am going to end this here because I want it less than 15 minutes. Um, but if this offends you, if you have the urge to bring me back to the church because you feel I'm wrong, this is what I ask. Test it against the spirit. Test it against the word. Fast and ask God 
for the sermon. And then let's talk. Peace. God bless.